1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26. The Bible says this, For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Till he come. That's the title of my message this evening. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. Lord, thank you for your word. Lord, thank you for this series of messages that we've been hearing on Sunday nights. And Lord, now we conclude with a call to order to your table. Lord, thank you for the invitation. Lord, it's your table. Lord, you're the Lord of it. And Lord, as we partake together as a church family, Lord, I pray that you would help us to see our duty and our responsibility. But I pray that you would help us to see embedded is your sincere promise and, and communication to us, Lord, that you are coming back. And Lord, our heart's desire this evening is even so, Lord, come quickly. Lord, thank you for the table. Thank you for the church. Lord, we love you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We have spent uh, Sunday evenings with Dr. Levesque in September preaching the very important doctrine of the Lord's return. Jesus is coming back. The Lord's return is the blessed hope of the Lord's churches. Now you have to understand what we mean by blessed hope. It's not the hope so. It's not the if it all works out, it'd be kind of neat if it happened. It is the hope of certainty to the local New Testament church. And so when we preach about the Lord's return, we're not preaching about a make-believe or we're not preaching about a, a, a fantasy or, 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 or a, a mythology. We're preaching about a historical certainty. The Lord is coming back. Well, well, how do you know the Lord's coming back? Because he said so. If the Lord does not come back, then he has bared false witness. The Lord has not come, does not come back, then he has lied. And he is not the Lord. But his very nature demands his return, and that is the certainty that we have that the Lord is coming back. The Lord's return is the blessed hope of the Lord's churches. And so it's powerful here. It ought to speak to us that as we observe this ordinance of the Lord's table embedded in the instructions here, or part of the instructions, is the promise of the Lord's return. In other words, Paul says here, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Till he come. In, in other words, this exercise, this ordinance has a expiration date. And that is the Lord's return. You often hear me analogize or liken the Lord's churches, the local New Testament church, as a battleship. And if the local New Testament church is a battleship, as opposed to a cruise ship, it's not a cruise ship, as opposed to a hospital. Now, a battleship has an infirmary, but a church is not a hospital. Now, when there are sick soldiers, you send them to the infirmary. Why? To get them well. To do what? Get back to fighting. That's what a church does. A church is in the fight. It's a gospel ship. If the local church is a battleship, then the Lord Jesus is her captain. The great commission are her orders. The great commandment to love the Lord your God with all your heart is her motivation. The Bible is her compass. The Holy Spirit is her wind. The ordinance of baptism is her enlistment. Isn't it great to have some young people enlist this morning? Three people being baptized. And so we, we wait until they're at an age where they can make that adult decision. And a person can get saved when, as a young child. We have young children here make testimonies of salvation. We encourage parents over the, those early years in a child's life, if they give a testimony of salvation, to confirm those things, to let them to work out their own salvation, to have assurance and confidence. And you know, one of the greatest ways to defeat a teenager and a young person is that they doubt, continually doubt their salvation. And I think sometimes we don't help them with that. 
without, by not allowing them to work out their salvation. In other words, to grow in the understanding of it and to have a full understanding of what it is that Jesus Christ has done for them. But we, you know, it's, it's particular to our church and we don't necessarily have chapter and verse on it. We, maybe we can go to uh, Hebrew and Jewish custom and history of a 12-year-old. But about 12, we say, you know what? Let this, if the child so desires and they come and ask to be part of the local New Testament church by baptism. And so we have, we baptize young people and I often tell them now, listen, you're responsible to mom and dad, but now you're part of the church family. You're, in, you're responsible to your church family by yourself. You don't join the church as a family. You join as an individual, just as you come to Christ as an individual, not your mother, not your mom and dad's faith, your faith, your believing in Jesus. And then I, then I remind them, and I say it all the time, they have, they've all heard me say this, you do not get to grow up and be a rebellious teenager. You have a responsibility. You've enlisted. You've enlisted. Baptism is, the, is her enlistment. But then the Lord's table is her roll call or her call to muster. Those of you that were in the military understand this idea of muster, or to muster together, or to, be st to stand and to be accounted for. And so it's required that, that the army, that the, the, ship, the shipmates, that they be called to order. They, they line up in formation, and a roll call is given to see who is there and ready for battle, to stand and to be accounted for, to communicate that they are still in the fight to reaffirm their faith in the captain of their salvation. And what a wonderful gift that the Lord has given the local New Testament church in the ordinance of the Lord's table, because it serves as a roll call. I mean, there ought to be in our lives and as church members this idea, say, no, no, listen, it's Lord's Supper night. I mean, that, that's a highlight night. That's a, that's a stand up and to be accounted for. There, there is a supernatural, there's a spiritual, there's a, a roll call that will, be, that will take place. And, and there is the call to order. There is the, the mustering of the troops. There, there is the, uh, the, the, the accountability and the, uh, the communication that you're still in the fight. And they're reaffirming that Jesus is still the captain of your salvation. You are holding on to the faith. What a wonderful thing. You know, what a wonderful thing to see your table mates and your companions side by side saying, I'm going to answer the call. It's Lord's table and I'm going to be here. I'm going to answer the call right with you. And, and, and when that bell is sounded, I'm going to be here and be a part of that to be seen and to participate with those that are around me and to affirm that I'm still in the fight. Praise God for that. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. My proposition for you this evening is remain faithful to the Lord's table in the last days. Remain faithful to the Lord's table in the last days. We've heard over the last few Sunday evenings that we are living in these last days, and these last days are perilous. And because of the trying of the times, attendance to the Lord's table is of an even greater importance. Perhaps we could even make the observation that attending to the Lord's table is probably one of the most countercultural things that we do. Because we say no, no to the world and yes to Jesus. We say my membership is here. My identity is at this table. This is where my allegiance is to. And while I have to live in the world, I am not of the world. My loyalty is here. Remain faithful to the Lord's table in the last days. I want you to see three things this evening. First of all, it is a command of persistence. It is a command of persistence. The Bible gives liberty as to the frequency of observing the table in the Lord's churches. But the expectation is for regular observation. In other words, the Bible doesn't prescribe to us how often or at what basis that we ought to observe the Lord's table. There's some churches that do it every Sunday. There's some churches that do it monthly. There's some churches, as we do it on a fifth Sunday or kind of quarterly, and there's some churches that do it annually. 
The Bible gives some liberty there for a local New Testament church, and I'm sure as churches exist all around the globe, there are different factors that would necessitate how often and what is appropriate for a local New Testament church to observe the table. But while the frequency, while there's liberty given for the frequency of the table, there is an inherent expectation that the observance of the table be regular. In other words, it's not a, just a special service when we think we need it, but a church has determined this is how we're going to observe the Lord's table, particularly this is when we're going to observe the Lord's table. The local church should know the appointed time. It should know the appointed time. Uh, I, what works very well in our context and here at Emmanuel is we do fifth Sundays. I mean, it's right there in the calendar. Fifth Sunday. If it's a fifth Sunday, it's the Lord's table service. It works out to about once a quarter. This year, we're going to be blessed with it being able to have uh, five Lord table services. Because there's five months with a fifth Sunday. But there is an appointed time and there's an appointed hour and it ought to be on the annual calendar or in the regular calendar and schedule of the local New Testament church. It's not, are we going to observe the Lord's table or if we observe the Lord's table, but when we observe the Lord's table. It's coming. It will happen. Jesus commands that the church exercise a faithful persistence that no matter what, no matter what happens, no matter how bad it gets, no, no matter how uh, overwhelming the circumstances, the instruction to the Lord's New Testament church, the battleship is this. Do this as often as you eat and drink till I come. In other words, there is a command of persistence. You can almost read in here, as Paul is given these instructions, and he says to observe the Lord's table in this fashion, and he says it till I come, that this is the final, the drawing battle line of the local New Testament church. In other words, fight to the next table. Fight to the next table. Fight to the next table. In other words, there has to be a persistence that we will endure, that we will see it through, that we will continue until the next table. In other words, we have to have a persistence about it. And you know what? We're, we are going, by the grace of God, to do this. We're going to gather. We're going to preach. We're, we're going to preach the gospel. We're going to see people saved. We're going to add people to the church. But the church will meet on a regular basis to observe this table. It is part of our dogged determination. And we're determined to do it. We've been talking about determined to worship Christ. And the table has that determination in there. And in other words, there's, there's a built-in persistence. See, the table is just not a, a religious ceremony. It's not an offshoot. It, it is literally the way that we mark the chapters in a church's history. It's the anniversaries. It's the, it's the date. It's what we are sailing to, that next muster, that next roll call. It's a command of persistence. Don't stop having the table. Don't give up the ship. Have the table. If you've ever been on a naval ship, um, they, we were at the, the battleship. It's a battleship that's up in uh, Saginaw or up there in the Midland, Saginaw, right there on the river. I think it's a battleship. Destroyer, Destroyer thank you. <clears throat> I, I was waiting for someone to correct me. Unlike no one corrected me this morning. <laughs> that was your test, and you all failed. I knew what I was doing. Yeah, I know. I was wondering if you knew that. They have these rules on a naval ship. And they have, like, these rules of, like, you know, engagement and whatnot. And the number one rule of the ship is don't give up the ship. Don't give up the ship. I mean, that's the, you're in the middle of the ocean. That's your lifeline. At all costs, fight for the ship. Don't give up on her. 
Even if she's on fire, and even though she's taken on water, and even though she's lost power, and even though she's lost steering, do not give up the ship. Fight and fight and fight for the ship. And in the Lord's table, and in the instruction and the command to the Lord's table, is this persistence to fight for the local New Testament church. Listen, beloved, don't give up on church. And don't give up on your church. Be a part of that fighting force that was going to, you know what, I'm going to do my part to make sure we get to the next Lord's table. Now listen, it's easy for a church like ours to take that existence very for granted. It's an assumption. Oh, surely, yeah, there'll be another one and we'll, we'll have it. And the records of history are full of churches who had an assumption that the Lord's, their Lord's table would always be there, and they took it for granted, and they're not there anymore. Churches that have died. Churches that have ceased to exist. Churches who are no longer answering the muster, the roll call, to their Lord's table. And I know sometimes we can get a little self-confident to think, well, Surely it's going to happen. But, but beloved, but by the grace of God. And we have to have that appreciation and that persistence towards it and never to take it for granted. What if there was the Sunday night that everyone said, well, it's not important that I'm going to be there. Oh, it's not important. You know, other people will be there to observe the table. And there was that Sunday night where everyone had that same thought in the very same moment. God forbid. God forbid, right? Maybe there is, that sun, there is that Sunday evening where there are not enough soldiers or there are not any soldiers that are willing to communicate that they're still in the fight, that they've been consumed by the devil. They have been uh, lured away by other desires and other interests, that they are no longer affirming the captain of their own salvation. See, the Lord's table is a command for persistence. Jesus said in Luke 18 and verse 8, nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. My ecclesiology, I, I like to read into that, the table. Will there be people observing the table? Will there be churches? Will there be battleships that are continuing to, continuing to follow the orders that I gave? And the order that I gave was as often as you eat and drink, do this till I come. How long should we do the Lord's table? Till the Lord Jesus comes. To continue in the faith until the next table and the next table and the next table. It's a command of persistence. Beloved, maybe it's taken all of your persistence to make it to this table. Maybe between now and the last, since the last table and today, you have been under fire. Maybe the devil has determined to shoot his fiery darts at you so as to consume you, so as to pick you off. But let me say this, kudos to you, and by the grace of God, you made it to the next table. You made it. You made it to the table. You made it to this next one. And tonight you're going to rejoice and you're going to, you're going to ask the Lord to get from the Lord what you need from him. And you're going to acknowledge your sin. And you're going to lay at the feet of Jesus, even right now in your heart, those things that have lured you away, those things that, that have fought against your persistence. And then you're going to ask the Lord, that Lord, as we partake together, you're going to reaffirm and you're going to answer the call. And you're going to say, I'm here and accounted for. And you're going to reaffirm the captain of your salvation. And the grace that you will receive, not a, a redeeming grace, not a special grace, but the great, the sustaining grace, the living grace, a faithfulness to Jesus, you will leave this table with confidence that whatever is in front of me, the Lord is faithful to see me to the next table. There is a persistence. It's a command of persistence, but secondly, it's a commitment of promise. It is a commitment of promise. The exercise of the table ought to be an exercise of faith, of faith in 
the Lord's return. Catch this. If the Lord is not going to return, then the table is simply a dead religious ceremony. If the Lord's not coming back, or if you don't believe the Lord is coming back, I mean, you go along with it for last days, but you really don't believe it, nor order your life around the fact that Jesus is coming back and live in that awareness, then the table is just dead religion to you. That's, that's all it is. It's, it's a ceremony. It's, it, 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 it's, it's, listen, it's no better than being a Catholic. And just going through, stand, sit, kneel here, there, cross here, do all those different things, that mean nothing. It is dead religion. But because Jesus is coming back, the table is not lifeless and without expectation, but it is the, the faithfulness to a living Lord exercising our full expectation that the Lord will return. We answer the table, we answer the call to the table knowing that each table counts towards the measure of a soldier's faithfulness. Think about this. Go with me here for a moment. We're not talking the great white throne judgment. That is the judgment of what you did with Jesus. Did you, and those that sit at that judgment rejected Jesus. And, G, and the Lord will tell them, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for I knew you not. And it will, every person that is at the judgment, at the great white throne judgment, will spend an eternity in hell because they rejected Jesus as their personal Savior. This is Bible truth. But the Bible also tells us that for the believer, for those who have trusted Christ as their Savior, that there is a judgment for them as well. And the Bible calls this the judgment seat of Christ. And it will be at this judgment seat where our works, our things that we have done with Christ or for Christ since our salvation will be put to the test of his fire. And some will be burned away as wood, hay, and stubble, and some will shine forth of what, the, uh, of what they were in purity and motive towards him. But beloved, understand this. While heaven and hell for the believer has already been determined, you still must give an account. You have to give an account. And this life still counts. It counts for something. It counts in this judgment that the Lord has for believers. We understand this as Bible doctrine. So hear this. You will give an account for every table call. You will give an account for every table call. Just like you will give an account for many other things. Uh, uh, the Bible even says every idle thought. <laughs> wow. Wow. Every misspoke word. Account. Accounting of our words. Accounting of our thoughts. If the Lord is taking accounting of our words and thoughts, we ought to be sure that he is a taking accounting of our attendance to the table. See, every table counts. And we will give an account. You will give an account for when you failed to report without good reason. Failed to report without good reason. When you failed to prepare knowing the date and the time. And when you failed to promote. What I mean by that is promote an environment conducive with your brothers and sisters in Christ. It is intended at the Lord's table that all accounts be cleared. It's a cleaning. It's why it's a roll call. You got to come to the table. And then, and listen, I, I, I know you're like I am. You know that table date is coming. And there might be things in your life that you know aren't right. There might be attitudes in your life that you know aren't right. There might be sin that you're harboring that you know it's not right. But you see that table date coming. And maybe it's not the individual conviction of the Holy Spirit in those moments to get right, but you're like, oh, the table is coming, though. And when the table comes, I'm going to have to give it a, I'm going to have to get right for this. 
Because there is a standard of proof. There, there is a, of a testing of oneself, and there is the warning that some sleep. And we take that seriously. There is the understanding that I'm, I'm going to have to show myself. I'm going to have to put on the uniform. I'm going to have to report. I, I'm going to have to prepare myself spiritually for that. And I'm going to have to promote it. In other words, I can't be the reason why someone else in my church family can't with clear conscience take the table. You can't can't hinder someone else. You can't hinder your spouse. You can't hinder your children. You can't hinder your parents. You can't hinder your your, your family and your friends. You can't hinder your table mates. And so you know you have an ought against a brother. And if you know you have an ought against a brother in Christ here in the church, then they know you have ought against a brother, a, a, a brother here in the Lord's church. And if you partake without getting that right, then one of you know that one of you didn't do it right. Probably both of you. Well, I ain't right with them, and I know they're not right with me. And you see, this is, there's a roll call here. See, it's a commitment of promise that we must give an account for. You will have to give an account how you approach every table. Now listen, you're like, Pastor Jay, that's like really twisting the elbow. That's like, man, but good, good. Man, Pastor Jay, when you put it that way, the, the table becomes this burden with my relationships and, and these things in my life. And man, you're really like you're making sure that we have to have a clear conscience before God. That's my job. <laughs> but good. But good. If the table serves that purpose, then it's serving a wonderful purpose. See, we have to give an account for every table because it is a a commitment of a promise, because I want you to understand this. The table is not at infinitum. There are a set number. There are a set number. I don't don't know what that number is. But there are a set number. The Lord is going to return, and between now and then, there are a set number of the Lord's tables. We have to give account for those tables. So each table ought to be partaken with a sense of appreciation and understanding, particularly that it may be the last. It is a commitment of a promise, but lastly, I want you to see, it is the consecration of a picture. It is a consecration of a picture. The Bible says there in verse 26, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Now we reject the doctrines of transubstantiation and consubstantiation. Some of you that come from Protestant backgrounds know what I'm talking about there. That the elements become the literal blood, uh, blood and flesh of the Lord Jesus Christ and that in partaking at the Lord's table that you are literally sacrificing Jesus afresh and anew every single time. Blasphemy. He said it is finished. He died once. He shed his blood once, and once was enough. And so the Bible is clear in this word that it's show. You do show this, and we understand the memorial qualities of the Lord's table. It's a, it's a picture. It's a, it's a show. It, 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 it's a reminder. It memorializes those things. And particularly what the Bible says here, it's a consecration of a picture. It shows what? It shows his death. Let me give you this thought. The table is the only remnant left of his death. The cross is gone. The grave is empty. The robe has disappeared and the folded napkin has vanished. All that remains is the memorializing or the remembrance of showing his death until he comes. All that is left of the death of the Lord Jesus Christ is the victory we enjoy and the table that celebrates it. Praise God. See, it's a picture. 
And it's a picture of the victory that we have received that death no longer has jurisdiction over us. That death and the grave have lost its victory and has lost its sting. It is only in the table that the Lord intends us to remember his death. You do show the Lord's death until he come. And so as we observe the Lord's table, while we understand our personal commitments as we come to it, and our personal accountability, all of those things matter because they are held in the light of the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what makes it serious. But beloved, not only is it serious, it's glorious. It's glorious. I mean, I, I, I was able to fulfill a dream this year and being able to take my two daughters on this road trip all over the place. And it was a great trip. And there's moments, well, I have one in college and now one in their junior year. I think to myself, man, it'd be great to be all cooped up again in that car and be driving 8,000 miles all over the country again. I mean, it'd be great to be going across the desert in Utah and seeing those sights and to be driving down, driving down the coast in California and to be at the Grand Canyon and all of those things. But those, that thing happened already. That, that event happened already. But every once in a while, I'll catch myself on my phone or on my computer bringing up the pictures. And the pictures are a reminder of, man, that was great. Pictures are reminders, man, I'm so glad that happened. Pictures are a reminder of, yeah, I remember when we were at that place. I remember when we were at this place. And, and pictures are a reminder of that. And beloved, what we observe tonight in the table is that picture. And it's a picture of a reminder of what Jesus has done for us. And that's what brings it all into scope. And that's what brings the accountability and all those things. Now those things are light. The burden is easy. The yoke is light. The responsibility, while it's serious, is nothing in comparison to the reward that I receive because Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And so tonight is not only muster and roll call and serious and commitment, making sure my accounts are all settled, but it's also victory. Praise God. Praise God. But praise God that he overcame death. Praise God that he rose from the grave. Praise God that he is coming again. And praise God that he's coming for me. So as we come to the table tonight, would you... Observe it in the victory of its, the consecration of the picture that it is.